when I was young, maybe nine or ten, uh, I remember that my grandmother, my mother's mother, taught me how to play cribbage. And I enjoyed playing with her, but she really hated it. I remember this one time when I skunked her at cribbage. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with cribbage, that's like not just beating you, but beating you double. And a word came out of her mouth that I wasn't used to hearing around my house, and it was directed at me. She was unhappy, to say the least. Needless to say, um, there's, on my mother's side of the family, there's a lot of competition and competitiveness. And I was thinking about that this morning as I was reflecting on the Gospel, and you're saying, huh? Um, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, which is the Jewish way of saying, take my teaching upon you. But he's not saying, okay, I'm going to teach you a new Torah, but rather, for I am meek and humble of heart. I am teaching you humility. I'm teaching you meekness, gentleness. And I think about how when we're humble, we don't have to be in competition with everyone else. And I was pondering over this and, and how um, our competition really keeps us from resting because we're always saying, well, if it's a zero-sum game that some people can win and some people can lose and, you know, instead of it, as it is for real, God saying, I want all people in my heavenly kingdom, but there's this competition, then there's always going to be someone that's better than me at something. Instead of rejoicing in that, it's going to be more of like, well, I got to get better so I can be better than them at that. And with that, then, when we see maybe somebody that's a lot better at, a, at something than we are, if, if we're looking at this from the competitive side of things, and we say, well, there's no way I can be that good. For instance, I ain't ever going to be an Olympic athlete. Just not going to happen. But if I were to look and say, well, I'm in competition with them, then what happens? I get all sorrowful and everything, and it takes so much energy as part of that. But in humility, what is humility? Humility isn't saying, oh, I'm nothing, I'm terrible. I'm, oh. like, like sometimes we hear like with Ahaz, when, a, when uh, Isaiah comes to a, King Ahaz and says, ask a sign from, from God, whether it be as great as the heavens or as deep as the netherworld. And he says, oh no, I won't ask. I won't tempt the Lord. That's false humility. That's not real humility. He sounds like he's saying, oh, I don't want to tempt the Lord, but really he didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. Real humility is truth. Real humility doesn't look and say, well, God's asking too much for me. Oh, I can't do that, Almighty God. You know, like, like Moses, you know, saying, you know, oh, 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 how, how am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? No, real humility is Mary. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. I know I'm nothing, but you are infinitely powerful and can work through me. And therefore, when we recognize who we are, that every gift that we have, and there really are gifts, we do really have talents from Almighty God. When we recognize those gifts, those talents, we can say not, look how good I am, or, oh, oh, no, I'm not really that good. But rather, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you have given me this gift. Then we're not in competition with each other. Then we can say, everything I have is gift. And so, for instance, I think about uh, some of the people that I know who are just beautiful musicians, just have wonderful voices, incredibly talented on different instruments. And, you know, I, I, if I was in competition, I'd say, yeah, am I better than them? Come on, can I, can I get better than them? But no, it's rather a rejoicing, like, wow, it's just so glorious to be able to sing with this person. Because this person is so, such a beautiful musician and loves the Lord so much and gives so much for God. And with that, then, we can rest. 
We can rest in the arms of the Lord instead of the energy it takes to be in competition, you know, saying, well, how can I get better? Or, boy, I'm never going to become anything. We can just rest in the arms of our God.